Gosport Ferry Limited has operated the crossing between Gosport and Portsmouth since 1883 and has gone through many changes in that time. In 1971, the Solent Enterprise was purpose-built at Brightlingsea by James and Stone to extend the service provided by our harbour ferries, the Gosport and Portsmouth Queens. During the summer months from May till October, we cruise the Solent to take in the many picturesque and historical places around our region. While those on deck watch the many other types of ferries using our harbour, the catering staff below decks are preparing our food and drink for the day. This is the hover travel, which daily commutes between South Sea and Ride on the Isle of Wight. Our vessel offers full wheelchair facilities, with wide doors and ramps for easy accessibility. We can accommodate around 200 passengers in air-conditioned comfort, with plenty of viewing areas on two deck levels. In the background is South Sea Seafront, a popular holiday destination for thousands of visitors. Making our way into the Solent, you can see the Spithead Forts, built by Lord Palmerston around 1860. Made out of granite and steel with walls measuring some 15 feet thick, this is one of 26 built in the chain surrounding our towns, including Fort Gilkica, built on the edge of Stokes Bay, which boasts one of the largest shingle beaches in England, and was the site of the Normandy invasion embarkations of thousands of Allied troops. On our right is the historic village of Alverstoke and St Mary's Parish Church. The Solent is a magnet for pleasure craft of all types and as we make our way towards Southampton you will find many to interest you. Whether on official business or just posing, the fun is the same. On our right stands Netley Abbey, built in the grounds of the hospital made famous by Florence Nightingale in the Crimean War. On our left is the impressive site of Forley Oil Refinery, started in 1926 by the SO Petroleum Company it is the second largest refinery in Europe, processing 95% of the crude oil from the North Sea rigs. Down below more tea is brewing, but on deck we are approaching the port of Southampton, an ocean village, a vast redevelopment of part of the old Docklands. Southampton water covers an area of 25 square miles, from its entrance to its upper reaches and is fed by three rivers, the Itchen, Hamble and Test. Southampton docks were originally started by the Romans in the 4th century when they fortified the town, and many of the walls can still be seen. Although merchant shipping has declined, the commercial container ships keep the docks busy with cargoes from around the world. Southampton is also used as a base by the cruise liner industry such as Cunard and P&O and it is the QE2 that we are now looking at. Built in John Brown shipyard on the Clyde, she was launched in 1967 and underwent a major refit in 1986. The Solent Enterprise has full cooking facilities and a wide range of meals on offer and as we make our way up towards the Norway our passengers can enjoy their meal either in the restaurant or al fresco on our upper deck. The Ocean Liner Norway was built in Le Havre solely for the Atlantic passenger service and weighs 76,000 tons. She was bought by the Norwegians and was renamed in 1979. In 1980 she steamed to Miami and became the largest ship ever to cruise the Caribbean. Having turned around, we are making our way back to the QE2 as she is being pulled away from her berth by the port tugs. These workhorses do a sterling job guiding large liners in and out of their berths where maneuverability is a problem. The QE2 spends six months operating the Atlantic route between Southampton and New York and six months cruising the ports of the world. As well as the tug service, the Red Funnel Line run many different passenger services and this is one of their express services between Southampton and the Isle of Wight. 
We must say goodbye to the QE2 now, as we turn left at the mouth of the River Hamble. Made famous recently by the TV series Howard's Way, many of the buildings and villages are recognisable from the series. The river is maintained and looked after by Hampshire County Council, but also has its own harbour master who controls the movements of vessels which enter and leave the river daily. This stretch of water may well have more expensive boats and houses than any other in England. One of the most famous pubs in England, the Jolly Sailor, marks our turning point in the Hamble. And if you're here on holiday, it's a lovely venue to come and watch the yachting world go by. As we make our turn, we pass Moody's Boatyard and Marina as we make our passage back to the Solent on our way to Cowes. Norris Castle was designed by James Wyatt for Sir Henry Seymour and started in 1795. As we are fortunate enough to be here during Cow's Week, the normally busy port is besieged by a legion of diverse craft vying for position as we make our approach from the western side of Cow's Harbour. This array of fabulous waterfront properties is known as Millionaire's Row. John Paul Getty's fabulous yacht is this year's replacement for Britannia. As we make our approach to Red Funnel's West Cows Terminal, we pass the home of the Royal Yacht Squadron, reputedly the most exclusive nautical club in existence. Already berthed alongside our jetty is Red Funnel's latest fast commuter ferry, Red Jet 3. We stop just long enough to disembark our passengers who are going to spend the morning at Cowes and return to Gosport. As we make our approach back to Portsmouth Harbour, we are passing Fort Gilkicker and Hesler Hospital. At one time this was the largest red brick building in Europe and was built from donations made by Canadian citizens. At its mouth, the harbour is only 500 feet wide and once would allow a large chain-link boom to be stretched across to prevent enemy ships entering. Garrison Church was built in 1212 as a hospital and was also known as St. Nicholas after the patron saint of sailors. The church roof was destroyed by enemy fire during an air raid in 1941. The round tower was built by Henry VIII in 1417 one of two originally commissioned to protect the harbour entrance. 
Tower House was the home of the late William Wiley, a famous marine artist. One of the oldest pubs on the Portsmouth waterfront, the Stillen West is on Spice Island, given its name because the first spices to be landed in England arrived here. Hasler Marina is the latest development to take advantage of Gosport's unique waterfront areas. HMS Victory was Nelson's flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar. Launched at Chatham on May 7, 1764, being a first-rate, three-decked ship of the line. Arriving back at Gosport's pontoon after an enjoyable day on the water, it's time to bid our passengers farewell as we prepare for our next voyage, the Caribbean Party Cruise. This is one of many themed party evenings operated throughout the summer months. As our Caribbean night coincided with the climax to the Cow's Week Regatta, we were able to take advantage of the spectacular firework display. But all too soon we must bid farewell to Cow's, as tomorrow heralds the beginning of the Festival of the Sea. <laughs>